Hey guys, welcome to my first devotional video today. Um, I'm just so grateful. It's been a lovely day so far. We've had sunshine and I'm just excited to get outside today and just enjoy that. I hope you guys have had a wonderful weekend as well. I'm excited to be able to share with you a word that uh, God was able to speak to me um, in the last few days. And so I'm excited to share that with you guys. Uh, so just to kind of give you context, I have been going through the Old Testament in the last few months. I say that, but I'm still only in Exodus. <laughs> um, it's been a slow process reading through the Old Testament because there's just so much in it. And so I really have been trying to take my time reading through it and not rushing it, but really trying to absorb the information given to me. So yes, I am in Exodus right now. So this is a story when uh, Moses was able to free the Israelites uh, after God had sent all those plagues and was able to um, have Pharaoh decide to free the Israelites. But at this point right now, uh, Pharaoh's chasing after the Israelites after he realized, what did I just do? I just let the Isra I just let all of our slaves go. Like, what the heck? <laughs> so uh, th they are now being chased by Pharaoh and his army uh, through the wilderness. And a lot of them are complaining. They're mad because they're saying like, Moses, like we could have just stayed slaves, uh, but we're going through this treacherous wilderness and desert and Pharaoh's army's right behind us. Like, wouldn't it have been better if we stayed slaves uh, to Egypt? So there's a lot going on right now between the Israelites and God and Pharaoh. And what really stood out to me was how the Israelites were talking when they were freed from slavery, but yet they're complaining that now it's harder because they're not slaves anymore. And because they are going towards something that's gonna benefit them and bring glory and bring glory to God. So um, to give you a little more background, I wanted to show you the book I have been using to help me read through uh, the Old Testament and it's a book series called Seeing Jesus in the Old Testament and I had read through the first book which was The Promise of God which went through just the book of Genesis and now I'm going through The Lamb of God which is through Seeing Jesus in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy and the author is Nancy Guthrie. She is an amazing writer. She really knows how to help you take scripture and apply it to your life as well as studying it uh, for its history, for its literary context. It's just been a really great uh, book series to go through to help me get through the books of the Bible. So I'm very grateful for it. And again, it's seeing Jesus in the Old Testament series. And this one in particular is the Lamb of God going through the some of the historic books of the Bible and basically looking at God's judgment during that time. So that's what I've been using uh, to help me with uh, Bible, my Bible study time and it's been great so I definitely recommend that series. I'll definitely have uh, in the description below I'll have uh, this book and like the link so you can buy it um, on thrift books. It's cheaper but you can also get it on Amazon or your local bookstore and I'll have a link as well with the scriptures I'll be using today if you just want to look it up really quick uh, right after the video. So I really appreciate that that you guys again tuned in today and I'm excited to get in the words so let's do it. So in this chapter particular, we are looking at Exodus chapter 14. And this is right before they're about to pass through the Red Sea. Now, again, right now, like I said before, Pharaoh's chasing after the Israelites uh, with his army. Uh, they're in danger of getting attacked and possibly killed um, and possibly some return back to Egypt to go back to being slaves. And Moses is trying to tell them like, no, trust in the Lord, he has a plan. For this he set you free for a reason but the Israelites aren't seeing it like that so instead in verse um, verse 11 of chapter 14 they say was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die what have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt didn't we say to you in Egypt leave us alone let us serve the Egyptians it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert and for me, I'm kind of sitting there dumbfounded, thinking, wait a minute, you're complaining that you were set free? <laughs> like, I don't, you know, it's like, I don't understand, like, why are, they, why are they being so stubborn when God had brought them freedom from being enslaved for centuries, um, ever since the time of Joseph, after Joseph had died? And you're complaining that you were set free and now you have to endure this wilderness? Wouldn't you rather go through a wilderness than stay being a slave? And then a thought came to mind for me that 
don't we do that today already? Don't we complain about uh, not being able to stay in our old ways and being able to stay where it's comfortable, even if it's bad for us? And I think that happens a lot to us in our sin. When we are slaves to our own sin, we stay comfortable for a while. And over time, like, yeah, we can get convicted, but over time, just like Pharaoh had hardened his heart, our hearts can be hardened and we don't even feel the conviction anymore because we're so stuck in our ways and we're so stuck in our sin. So reading this, I was convicted of like, wow, I'm like, I have been that person before where I didn't want to change for the better. I didn't want to have to endure the hard healing season if it was just more comfortable to stay in my sin or to stay in my brokenness. And so reading this, especially when it says, what have you done to us to bring us out of Egypt? It's kind of like saying, what have you done to me by getting me out of my comfort zone? And it's just amazing to me that we so often do that where we're so afraid of getting healing, we're so afraid of letting go of things that aren't good for us because they've become a part of us. And we get so upset with God because when we feel like he promises us that there's gonna be healing, we actually go through a lot of pain. But I've said this before in a uh, devotional I've shared with my workplace, that the more painful the healing, the more beautiful the outcome of that healing. And that is so true for the Israelites. They go through such a terrible wilderness season, but it brings them the promise of later coming Jesus Christ. And so it's so great to remember that no matter what healing we're going through is going to benefit us in the end and bring such glory to God. And something that I was encouraged with this today is that I'm not the only one who struggles with not wanting to leave my sin. We all struggle with that. We're human, we're sinful beings. Ever since uh, Eve took the bite of that fruit, we were sinful in the beginning. And so I love Moses's, I love Moses' response to them um, in verse 13. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord's will, the Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. The Lord will fight for you. You only need to be still. A lot of times as well, I think we believe as Christians, we have to do a lot of work in order to be closer to God. But honestly, it's being still in his presence. It's being still in knowing that he makes us whole. That brings us that freedom. The Israelites, all they were asked to do was trust in God and follow him by following Moses. That's all they had to do. But because of the lack of food, the lack of water that God provided for them later, they were still complaining. But God had asked them to do one thing, which was trust in me. That's what God said to me during a very hard season in my life when I had to go through healing. That's what God tells all of us, that we don't need to fight so hard to get out of our sin. We just need to let go of it and trust him. When he brings us out of something, it is for good. It is for our good. And a verse that I had looked at um, almost a year and a half ago was the, was the verse, the Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. When I read that, I thought the sin you see today, you will never see again. So whatever sin, whatever struggle, whatever trauma we may have gone through in our lives, we never have to see that again in our own life, in our own hearts. We can go towards freedom, we can go towards wholeness and know that God is never gonna forsake us in that. Like the Israelites kept thinking that God was gonna forsake them in the desert, he never did. He parted the Red Sea. He parted the Red Sea for them so that they can go through. He made, he made, he created one of the biggest miracles that the Bible has ever seen. And that's parting a huge sea. And sometimes when we look in front of us, we think that that sea cannot be parted. But I want to assure you that God will part that Red Sea in your life. And that you may be looking at it and thinking, that's not possible. I'm just going to go back to my old ways because that is not possible. But I want to say to you today that it is possible because God makes all things possible because he is God and just remembering that I'm the Israelite I'm the one who's complaining I'm the one who can't see beyond the Red Sea but God parts it for me and it's just an amazing thing to remember that even if I even if my own plan 
doesn't get fulfilled, his plan does, and it's so much better than what I could have ever imagined. And something else I've thought about too is, you know, when we start, when we decide to go towards healing, when we decide to get closer to God, all of a sudden these obstacles come in the way and we question, God, why is this so difficult? And I don't know how to answer that question, honestly. Life is just difficult and healing is difficult because it's uncomfortable. But again, God parts the seas for us. And the thing is, it's easier to live in sin than it is to live for God. And Jesus had warned us in his teachings that we would be persecuted and that it wasn't gonna be an easy road being a Christian, being a Christ follower. Just like the Israelites, you know, it's not gonna be easy for them to leave their slavery behind because it's gonna be a journey, but it's gonna be a journey that's gonna be so full of hope and so full of light. So when our plans don't go according to plan, it doesn't mean that there's nothing good on the other side. God's plan is always better, even if that means we have to walk through the Red Sea just to get there. But that was my uh, devotional for today. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. I know it really touched me when God had revealed that to me. And again, this was from uh, chapter 14 of the book of Exodus. I really encourage you just to read that story as a whole. It's beautiful. It's so full of the reflection of Jesus. And uh, in the comments below in the video, um, I'll have a few links for that as well. And the music is brought to you by uh, Ellie Holcomb. Uh, it's instrumental of her song, one of my favorites, uh, Red Sea Road. I thought it was appropriate. I definitely encourage you to look at that video as well. The lyrics are beautiful and just very relatable. Thank you guys again uh, for tuning in with me today. I hope this was able to bless you. And I look forward to talking to you guys next time. Have a great rest of your evening.